Okay, hi there. Welcome to our monthly update on the UK economy. We take a, a bunch of stats, some key charts, and try and make sense of what's happening in the UK. In particular, let's get a feel for the extent to which we're in a recession and uh, perhaps the likely depth and the duration of that recession. So hopefully this will be a useful session just to update you as we head into a, a really important phase of the economic cycle. It's highly likely that the UK is already in recession, and I think we can expect to see a steady flow of headlines about how businesses are responding to what are pretty tough macroeconomic conditions, and of course households under enormous pressure as well, with real incomes going down by perhaps 7% in the next year. The OECD, the Organisation of Economic Cooperation and Development, they now publish a weekly growth tracker. They kind of all kinds of different indicators go into it from which they do a kind of weekly estimate of GDP for the UK and other countries. And as our chart shows here, uh, that tracker has now moved into negative territory. And other data supports the view uh, that a downturn has already started as we reach the year end. So this is the index of GDP published uh, by the government. And you can see that the level of GDP the monthly data showing a fall in GDP just in the last few months there. Indeed, GDP in the UK remains below where it was just before the pandemic. Indeed, if we take a look at this chart, this is G7 real GDP percentage change, USA, Canada, Italy and so on. And the UK is the only country where in the third quarter of 2022, compared with the last quarter of 2019, our national output in real terms is lower than it was before the pandemic. So UK economy is in a pretty fragile state if we look at the growth data. And consumer confidence is now at its lowest level since 1974. Well, I was just becoming a teenager then. I can remember the mid-1970s. They were tough decades. This chart, interesting, this is called Index of Confidence, asking people how confident are they about the next 6, 12 months and so on. The long run average is 100 so any time the index is below 100, people are a little bit more pessimistic than normal. And you can see that at the moment it's well down. Business confidence hasn't fallen as much, but consumer confidence has dropped sharply. And uh, that's now starting to kind of show through in the data. Take a look at this chart. So this shows weekly the value of weekly retail sales, excluding fuel. The sort of thing, you know, if we go to the petrol forecourt, we don't include that. You can see that very strong seasonality in the weekly retail sales data as we approach uh, Christmas in the next few weeks. This figure includes money spent in shops, in supermarkets, as well as online. And you can just kind of see that there has been a decline in, in retail sales. People are holding back. People are making adjustments to their spending. Just a bit of, in, a bit of detail here. I think there are signs here. If you look at internet retail sales e-commerce. There are signs that consumers are reining back on their internet spending. The average weekly value of internet sales was 2.2 trillion, sorry, 2.2 billion, sorry, um, in October 2020, excludes fuel. And again, you can see seasonality there, but again, there's a little bit of a, a downturn over the last uh, 18 months or so. Black Friday, I think, has been and gone, hasn't it? And a lot of the Online retailers have really struggled to make a big impact on that. People are cutting back. The Office of Budget Responsibility forecast that the UK has been in a recession since the, well, the start of the autumn, really, and they also argue that the recession is probably going to last at least a year. Bank of England even more pessimistic, and partly it's because people are cutting, cutting back on spending. 54% of people saying they're spending less on non-essentials, people trying to cut back on their fuel consumption, fewer essential journeys, people spending more time shopping around and so on, and people dipping into their savings, 23%, according to this Ipsos Mori poll. Interesting. Then, of course, the big story is that household budgets are being squeezed deeply by rising inflation. Inflation in the UK, measured by the Consumer Prices Index, the cost of goods and services, a weighted basket of the things we buy, inflation reached 11.1% in October. Look at that sharp increase. I've called this the end of an era of low inflation. Uh, it's the highest inflation rate since October 1981. To put that in perspective, everybody, 
I was revising for my <laughs> A-levels in 1981-82. So that was 40 years ago. How that time flies. 11% inflation. Now, will it get higher? Who knows? My instinct is it's going to come down in 2023 because of recession. And hopefully gas prices and things will also start to fall off their super high levels. Of course, the Bank of England has been raising their main monetary policy interest rate, the so-called base rate or bank rate. Eight successive uh, meetings, I think, pretty much where the interest rate's gone up. More recently, of course, it went up by 0.75 of 1% to 3%, the highest rate since 2007, 2008. So we're moving back towards interest rates of 3 perhaps 4 even 5%. We don't know where interest rates will peak. They'll probably peak sometime in 2023 when the Bank of England think, thinks that the inflationary threat is under control. And of course, interest rates on home loans are becoming more expensive. We talked about this in some of our video shorts. This is just a selection of mortgage interest rates for you up to the end of the autumn. And you can see that, that clear turning point here, isn't it? That in the cost of taking out a, a fixed mortgage for two, three, two, three years, five years, etc., has gone up quite sharply. To close to 5%. Indeed, many mortgage lenders have taken their mortgages off the market. So it's more expensive to find a mortgage and it's harder to find somebody who's willing to lend you the money. Government spending, uh, of course, has been going up. Big support for households, government borrowings much higher than they forecast. And what one of the things we look at is the yield curve, which is essentially those of you who haven't done this before, it's essentially the interest rate on bonds of different maturity. So a one-year bond, you borrow the money now and you pay it back in a year. A 10-year bond, you borrow now and pay it back in 2032. Do the maths. <laughs> and normally, the longer you lend, the longer you borrow for, the higher the rate of interest. So the yield curve should be upward sloping. Indeed, it is at the moment. Those These interest rates have come down quite a bit since the, uh, the mini-budget catastrophe of September. So governments are uh, being able to borrow at the moment about 3.5% for 2, 3, 5, 10 years, 4% for 10 years. They can borrow even more cheaply for 30, 40 years, uh, I think presumably because the, the essence is that the inflation rate will be lower going forward. This is quite an important chart because if the interest rate goes up, the government is going to be spending tens of billions of pounds in interest each year on its debt. Its debt is nearly 100% of the size of our GDP. For now, unemployment remains low, 3.6% of the labour force for the moment. But of course, we're expecting it to go up in 2023. The recession is with us. Uh, most forecasters reckon the unemployment rate will rise by about 500,000 to something like 1.6, 1.7 million, which would be about an unemployment rate of about 4, 4.5, maybe 5%. So unemployment likely to go up. Uh, and of course, there won't be any furlough scheme this time. We're not in a pandemic. Businesses will be shedding jobs and the government won't necessarily be stepping in to support wages. The other big question mark, I guess, is how much further can property price inflation carry on? We are seeing signs that house prices in some regions and some measures are now starting to fall. And we'll keep an eye on that in our shorts and on our Instagram account. I think you can just see here there's been a levelling off in the Halifax house price index, which certainly in the last <laughs> few years has been on pretty, pretty steep upward trajectory. So it looks as if the property price inflation for the moment is coming to an end which may be good news if you're a first-time buyer. And of course, the big question mark, finally, is the extent to which your energy bills of your household will keep going up. This uh, is the average uh, energy bill, standard variable rate by tariff and supplier, the six largest suppliers. And of course, you can see that steep rise in the price cap in the spring. And then another one again, up to two, you know, 2,000. What's it going up to, I think? The energy price cap goes up in February to something like two and a half thousand pounds. But keep in mind, of course, the government is spending a hundred billion pounds offering financial support to households and some businesses to help uh, control energy bills. Very, very significant subsidy, hoping to, to control the, uh, the, limit the damage in terms of energy bills. Okay, so what are we saying overall? I think uh, if I was uh, coming to a, uh, a view on this, uh, I would argue, so hopefully I'll start appearing here, 
Here we go. I'm back with you. Uh, I think if I was to make a, a recent judgment, the, the early signs are that we are in recession. The UK economy is in a downturn. Um, and it's going to get worse because the Bank of England will keep raising interest rates as we head into the spring. So interest rates probably going to go to four, four and a half, maybe five percent. For me, the big danger is that millions of households are really, really struggling as we head into the end of the year. Their real incomes are going down. Millions of people have virtually no savings to fall back on. Job, job insecurity is, uh, is um, taking a little bit of a hit. Uh, the cost of the mortgage is going up. Uh, so and we can see, for example, the, the rise in industrial action as people take action to try and protect their real incomes. These are tough times, very tough times for the UK. The positive, I think, could be that gas prices globally are falling, that maybe we're getting close to the peak in that kind of energy price shock that we saw after the Russian, Ukraine, uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. So hopefully as we head into the spring, early summer uh, of, um, of uh, 2023, we'll start to see inflation falling a little bit more sharply than people expect. But it's still going to be 6 7% average next year. And wages just won't, won't be the same. So people will be taking a cut to their real incomes, allied to the tax increases the government's announced. So 2023 will be a tough year, a bad year for real disposable incomes. And when real disposable incomes go down, people spend less. And consumption is the biggest single part of aggregate demand in the, in the UK. Thanks for joining in on this little update on the UK. If you've enjoyed it, if you found it useful, please press like or subscribe. We, we, we don't take that for granted, but we certainly appreciate it. Uh, we have a great Instagram page, which provides you with kind of daily news stories, daily news quiz questions, that kind of stuff. So do head over to Tutor 2 Economics Instagram for that. For, but for the moment, thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. See you again soon.